Hey guys, it's John, welcome back. Today, I'm gonna to talk about what I do when I hit a technical challenge and have no idea what to do. I've hit this several times on an ongoing basis, whether it's you know when I first started at my new job and I had to navigate this new code base, or when I was in technical interviews and you got a problem that you just didn't know what to do. So uh, I have like 10 to 12 tactics that I generally use to figure this stuff out. My hope is that you can at least take maybe one or two of these away and it'll help you get through some of these being stuck moments where you have no idea what to do. So uh, first thing is make sure that you really understand the problem. Like this should go without saying, but sometimes you're so, and I saw this when I was uh, conducting interviews at, at the boot camp that I went to, is that one of the most frequently one of the most frequent mistakes that people do is they jump right into to trying to solve the problem without actually understanding all the bounds of the problem. What are the requirements? Um, making sure that you know what are the inputs. If it's if it's especially if it's like a well-defined small problem, what are the inputs? What are the outputs? Um, and then like what are the the bounds in which I have to work? Um, so make sure you, like that's the first thing I do. I understand the problem inside and out. And then if I don't understand anything, if there's anything that's ambiguous, uh, the next step is I really wanna clarify that. So um, I want to basically ask questions if there's something that's that seems important but that's not said or not clear. Um, I want to restate the problem in my own words because a lot of times if I do that, I can already expose an error in my thinking. And then in general, I'm trying to just chip away at the ambiguity, just trying to like clarify things. Um, and then the next little, mental trick that I do isn't necessarily literal, but I like the concept and I and, and I think that you can use this effectively. Um, basically what it is, is is fitting this problem into one page. So like try to scale it down and uh, get to a certain level of abstraction where you can actually fit this concept in your head. Um, there's no way uh, if you have this, you know, millions of lines in, in a code base, you're gonna know every detail uh, for every component in that code base. So instead, what you should do is pick your defined problem that you're supposed to solve and make sure that, can you draw a diagram and fit the system in one page? Or can you fit the a diagram of like the component in one page? Or, you know, get it to a, a level where you can fit it on one page. The next step four is, is really important and uh, I think it's really necessary in its play in debug. Um, so when I'm feeling completely lost and, and something's completely new to me, um, I really love the, this thought of just playing with the code. So you're kind of, I'm kind of like poking around, you know, I'm looking at this method and that method, I'm, I'm kind of like jumping or it's kind of like um, sporadic and uh, there's not necessarily a systematic way that I'm going through things, but I want to become familiar with the code. Like I want to make sure that it's not as scary anymore. So the more time I spend playing around with it, diving into stuff that's interesting to me, the less that I'm intimidated by it and, and things start to click because um, my mind isn't too stressed. Um, so that's really important. Step five is <laughs> read the freaking docs. Um, so I say this because uh, docs are really boring and nobody wants to read them for the most part. Some people do, but those people are weird and um, we need them and I would like to be more like them. But uh, docs are for the most part boring, but if you have the patience, like a lot of times the problem that you're having and, and the confusion that you're having just means that like you didn't find the right doc or you didn't take the, the time and the patience to actually like read through it carefully. So make sure like, especially in an interview too, like this can equate to listen to the interviewer when they're describing the question. Because if you start solving it in your head before they're done, like describing it to you, you're, you're, you basically can't be bothered to actually like think about the details that they're giving you to solve the problem. So read the docs, and then pay attention to the details that you're given. So step six is has saved me so much time, um, and it's see if someone has solved something similar, or in, in other words, find a point of reference. Um, there's so many times that, you know, uh, I, I've learned this the hard way where like I've spent so much time trying to solve a technical problem and like recreating, uh, what's the phrase, like, uh, recreating the wheel or something. Um, I should know that phrase. Oh, well, uh, 
but anyway, like the point is, it's like, you don't have to do that. Somebody probably has done something similar enough. So, you know, don't recreate this from scratch if you don't have to. Find a point of reference and see if you can modify that. Because um, a lot of times, like creativity and ingenuity and innovation is is basically iterating uh, on something that already exists, but doing it slightly differently and, and, and fitting it for your use case and the problem you're solving. So find out if something did something sim- if someone did something similar and work off of that instead of just like doing the whole thing fr- from scratch. The seventh thing is prototype fast. Um, so like get to a working prototype, even if it's crappy and there's holes in it and it doesn't fully work. But, but this will, first of all, give you uh, a lot of confidence because you've already solved part of the problem. You have something working. And to do that, you've probably had to go through some, some friction and some legwork and figure some stuff out. Um, but once, once you prototype, then you can start iterating instead of just researching and thinking and getting stuck in all these details and focusing on what you don't know, you're actually like learning by doing and, and it's going to expose new things that you need to figure out that you wouldn't have even run into before. So, um, get to a working prototype fast. Um, and then the eighth thing is, um, once you do that, like I said, you're going to expose some weaknesses. So maybe at this point, it makes sense to like, you know, do some, do some tests. Like, so like write some unit tests or some functional tests and, and like try to see, um, okay, is my prototype, what bugs does it have right now? Or what, uh, you know, what is the gap between my prototype and what I need to have in production? And so once you test your prototype, expose bugs, expose weaknesses, see what is working as well, that'll give you some confidence. Um, and then uh, the ninth thing after you do that is just chip away one thing at a time. You're gonna get really overwhelmed if you try to just do everything at once. And I know like I like the worst feeling in the world is when I'm like, okay, I have this mountain to climb and I have no idea how to do it. And so I'm so overwhelmed that I can't even take the next step. When in reality, that's all you need to do is take the next step. So chip away one thing at a time. The 10th thing is ask questions if you're stuck. Sometimes, you know, I've run into situations uh, where like I couldn't have figured out on my own. I had to ask somebody else. And so if you're stubborn and you think like, and and I'm like this, like I I don't want to ask people for help if I don't have to. Um, It's just like, you know, you want to be independent. You want to like be like, you want to feel like you're adding value and that you're self-sustaining and that you're competent. But sometimes literally somebody else is like the gatekeeper of information that you need to solve that problem. And once you simply ask the question, the problem is is like 50% closer to being solved. Um, so don't be afraid to ask questions. It's, it's a sign of strength as long as you've done the legwork to get to that point and you've kind of exhausted your options uh, as opposed to outsourcing the work to somebody else, which is what we think of when we don't wanna ask questions. The 11th thing is, it's just a mental f- like trick that I use where I, I just say to myself like, all right, I'm gonna pretend this is easy. like somebody has solved something similar it, it or, or let's say it's it's even you just trying to understand something that you don't understand like somebody understands it somebody figured this out at some point so it's figure outable and um if you start to think of it like hey there is a solution to this like whether i know it or not right now at some point this is going to be easy to me so like how can i think about this that makes the most sense because something about this will make sense so instead of thinking this is some like problem that can't be solved and how am I ever gonna figure this out and uh, you know, just getting yourself into this rut, instead you can think of, you no, know, there's a solution here and like I bet I can figure it out, somebody else did. So um, that really does help me, pretending that something's easy or figure outable. Um, and then the last thing is basically you have to have this mindset that over time, the more problems that you solve that seem unsolvable, the more confidence that you're gonna have at every new problem that comes up. And this is the beauty of actually going through the hard work and grit of like getting to the end and having solved a hard problem is that in the future, you're gonna know, you're gonna be hit with another problem with ambiguity and then you're gonna realize, hey, I've, I've had this feeling before. Like on the last project I did, I felt lost, I felt like, it would take me forever to figure this out if I could at all uh, and I didn't know what to do, but then I figured it out and I made it work. And the more you do that, uh, the more comfortable that you'll be with, with ambiguity 
and solving problems that don't have obvious answers. So those are some of the tricks, not really tricks, some of the tactics that work for me. And that's kind of the, the mental framework that I use uh, you know, either at work or on my, uh, you know, when I'm coding for fun, uh, or even in interviews. So I hope that you can take at least one thing away from here and add to your toolbox and, and use it when you hit a technical problem where you're totally lost, because the more that you do, the better that you'll get and the more comfortable you'll be with solving those problems. So thanks for uh, tuning in to this video and I'll see you next time. Bye.